Good morning. It is 6.48 in the morning on a Saturday. Far from ideal, but I'm heading to Ultraflex this morning for a push session, Saturday push, as always. I hope you enjoy the video. If you do, drop a like, subscribe, and I'll probably see you in Rotherham next. Bye. Okay, so I've just arrived. It is now just before eight o'clock, so the, the doors aren't open yet, but I just wanted to come on here and explain the plan of action. So, like I say, we're in for push. In my previous videos, I've been a little bit all over the place with like how I'm being educational. Um, so in these sort of more educational videos, or at least when I'm giving some value, I don't want to just be saying random stuff whenever I think about it. I want to have some sort of structure to the video. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the structure of my push session rather than just going to onto any exercise and thinking of like a, a cue that I, I tend to use, which can be useful. But if I put it together in like a, a video like this and then there's eight exercises or whatever, it ends up just, just being loads of different random bits of information. So I want to be a bit more topical. Today's topic is going to be the structure of this push session, why I've chosen certain exercises in certain orders, and hopefully that will make it a little bit more of an interesting and helpful video for everyone watching. So yeah, should be in in about, what time is it? In about 10 minutes. Leslie's running a little bit late. I'll try and get him on the mic as well today. So yeah, should be in the next 15 minutes and I will see you in there. <laughs> right, exercise number one, dumbbell lateral raise. So the reason why we put this right at the start is you can see Leo doing it now actually. It's loading really heavily when he comes to the very top and then at the bottom it's pretty much no load. So first of all, that's good to do at the start because as we know, as you get through a session, it gets harder and harder to get a muscle completely short. So we're doing this first so that we can sort of make the most of that short range. You'll notice when I was doing it, for the first sort of 10 reps there, I was actually stopping sort of just, just before my arms are fully straight at the bottom so that I've still got tension on my delt. But then towards the end of my set, I need to create a little bit of momentum to get out of that hole. You've got to give it a, you've got to give it a good, good rag at the end. So I'm happy with my arms going completely straight down and then almost creating some momentum from the bottom by almost like throwing it up. And it just allows me to get a few more reps and uh, it feels good, so that's why I do it. These always feel so good. Whoa. Awesome. Bash. Right, that's laterals ticked off. Shoulders feeling nice and warm, which is another reason why I do that lateral first get a nut in the game and you just feel a little bit better going into the first press. So first press being a converging machine press. Now it doesn't have to be a machine. I just really like to do a converging press. So you could just do like a regular dumbbell press. By converging, I just mean your upper arm is going to be coming across your body. Again, to get your pec short in your first press and also it just feels good. So onto this uh, converging press. Bash! <laughs> Can I have a lift in, yeah. Two, two, one, yeah. Yeah, easy. You can see that it converges quite nicely, so it, it comes in close and it gets my pet quite short. If I did this quite late on in the session, it would be really hard to, to, to lock out because A, this machine gets heavier as you press and also your pet's getting quite short. So if I did it maybe third press, it probably wouldn't, wouldn't be a good decision, but first press, very good. If you're doing a dumbbell press, again, I'd probably do that at least first or second. Um, Partially for, for the stability factor. So if you do it later on in the session, it's gonna be really hard to stabilize those dumbbells. 
And second of all, because of that converging nature, it's going to be good to do first exercise. Boy. What did you get last week? Seven. Seven. I need eight. I need no eight. I'll get eight. No regrets. Come on. Ready? Three, two, one. Wow. You know. Tight in. Let's go. Again, fucking stay on it now. Stay with it. No! I'm ten pound down, so. There you go. Give me ten pound, I'll be all over that. We got this for ten last week. And that was a regression of one. I'm going to finish this diet with, an in, with a concave chest. I'm going to finish this diet with zero plates in there. Hey, John, mate, what's the top set? Zero plates. This is the machine. Two and a half. <laughs> right, no. <laughs> two and a half kilo. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, I'll see you over there. That's press number two, exercise number three ticked off. There's nothing really that special about that machine. I just like to do an overhead press second exercise. So this push session's more chest focused. So I'll do my, my chest press first and then a bit more of an upper chest slash front delt exercise second. Nothing that special in terms of the profile. It's not really loading anything massively. If anything, this machine's quite hard at the top as well, maybe a little bit too hard. But if you were choosing an exercise, you could just do uh, like a Smith machine overhead press seated. I'd probably opt for that. But yeah, nothing that special. On to now our third press, fourth exercise is on the prime incline press. So again, sort of hitting upper chest, but this one, we're gonna load it so it drops off quite nicely. <laughs> Alright, so like I mentioned, we're onto the prime incline press. So on this, I mean, most gyms don't have this bit of kit, but you can see there's like three pegs to load it on. We're loading it 50-50 top and middle. So, uh, so it should drop off towards the top, as in get lighter as you press through. There isn't really an exercise that you can do that would mimic this, unfortunately, but any sort of incline press with an even resistance profile, dumbbell press, barbell press, whatever it is, should do the job. behind it dropping off now or picking an exercise that gets a bit lighter towards the top is now it's really really hard to get the muscle completely short um, and therefore it's really hard to lock out on your press so having a press that sort of gets a little bit lighter towards the top just matches your strength a little bit so that you can still get those grinders towards the top rather than you pressing through and then suddenly getting stuck so it's a good option um, but also like I say that sort of dumbbell press Incline dumbbell press, incline smith should also feel pretty good at this point. It just might be a little bit hard to lock out. Okay, final exercise, or final chest exercise that is. A seated cable fly. I've set this up, I'll show you in a second, to basically load the length in quite a lot. So you'll see that the cable is near around 90 degrees to my arm when it's fully stretched out, so it's going directly backwards. 
And then as I come in, that cable gets quite close to my arm, basically meaning that it's dropping off nicely. And you see on my last rep here, I get like a pretty slow rep, but that's just because that strength profile of me is congruent with how I've set up the machine to match it. So if you're doing a cable fly first, you might want to put the bench a bit closer and the cables wider, but towards the end of your session, cables a little bit narrower, bench a little bit further away, and you should be able to get those like really slow grinders towards the end of your set. So give it a go next time you're doing a cable fly, just consider where you put the bench and how wide the cables are. All right, so exercise number, I think it's five or six. We've got our, we've got our second delt exercise, or side delt exercise. So we started off with the dumbbell lateral raise, which like I said, is gonna be really heavy up here and not very heavy here. Now I'm going on to this cable lateral raise. But now we're setting it up so that it's sort of around mid thigh. That's a bit heavy. So it's sort of around mid thigh. So now when my arm's down here, you can see how that cable's pulling that way. So I'm going to be loading my delt in this position. Whereas in the dumbbell lateral raise, there's nothing here. And as I go up, this is actually going to get a little bit lighter as I get to the top because this cable, the line of force, is getting close to my shoulder. So this is a good exercise to do, or a good choice, if you're doing this as like a second lateral raise. If you had it at first, you might just want to put this a little bit lower, just so you get a little bit more load in the top position. But for a second, second exercise, this setup feels pretty much perfect for me. Jesus, I'm hungry. Just to simplify all of that malarkey that I just talked about, the whole resistance profile type thing can be a little bit confusing. But to basically sum it up, if your last rep is really slow throughout the whole thing, you've probably got something right. So adjust things until you get there. And when you do, you'll, you'll know and it will feel really good. So that's why it can be useful um, to understand. But if you don't, just play around until you get some really slow reps and you'll be, you'll be good. Right, final exercise, we've got a tricep, <laughs> we've got a tricep press down. Nothing really that special about the selection, this one just feels nice. What I've done is, you can see I'm using two daisy chains rather than using like a bar. Because they're quite long, it allows me to line up my arm quite nicely. Falling backwards. It allows me to line up quite nicely so it doesn't really hurt my elbows very much. But if you use a little rope, you'll notice a lot of the time that you end up like in this sort of internally rotated position that doesn't feel very nice. So, could be a good idea. Use like a daisy chain setup like I'm doing here or you could just put two ropes together to make them like a bit longer and it just feels nicer on your elbows. It should get a bit of a nicer tricep contraction. So give it a go next time you do triceps. You can do it with a overhead movement as well. But now just doing the tricep press down, then we are done apart from abs and cardio. Nice. Right, that is a session done and dusted. Very good, very nice session. 25 minute cardio now to tick it off. I hope you learned a little bit there, a little bit about how we structure my push session. But if you did enjoy it, make sure you subscribe, like all of that jazz, and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.